Welcome to Mount Prospect Public Library's Library Life. I'm Kathy Cushing. Today we'll enjoy a library event showcasing local school principals reading their favorite children's books. We'll also catch a glimpse of Friday Fun Day, a monthly young adult series with a creative flair. And we'll discover how to prevent falls while promoting core strength and balance. But first, let's immerse ourselves in popular culture and fandom as we peek in on MPPL FanFest 2019. The Mount Prospect Public Library kicks off its first ever Fan Fest with an all day celebration incorporating a little something for everybody. I think one of the things that we really wanted to do was allow everyone to celebrate their fandom in their own way. It's your passion. Um, and librarians are all about passions, whether um, you're, you're passionate about education or whether you're passionate about books or even movies or, or, or pop culture, um, the library is something for everyone. So we really want you to come in and explore your passions. I think because we see so many people in here interested in so many different things, we wanted to call it just a fan fest because you could be a fan of anything and we are here to support that for you. Participants begin their FanFest quest with a special and tangible greeting. The welcome bags are, were, were basically swag bags. Um, we wanted people to be able to have something to hold, um, anything that you would get around the library. You know, if you did an activity sheet or if you did a coloring sheet or you made a mask, you know, something to put that in there. It was also a way for us to um, give out some prizes. Um, Dark Horse was one of our sponsors for the event, so they sent us a lot of comic books, they sent us lanyards, they sent us some pins, they sent us some other things like that. So those are all in there. Uh, also it allows us to give a schedule in there so people know what time and where things are in the library. Patrons of all ages embrace the spirit of the day, many donning costumes as they make their way through a myriad of fandom-related activities, including a library-wide scavenger hunt, creative crafts in the youth services department, photo ops with some beloved celebs, and a bit of cosplay. Cosplay um, stands for costume play, and we really came up with something where you can go around the room and really see a costume come from a brainstorm to how you're gonna make it and some of the, um, the materials that you're gonna use and some of the ways that you can craft it until you finally get your, your final product. Those who enjoy gaming are treated to a super fight board game, a fandom feud trivia game, and the opportunity to try their hand at virtual reality. Virtual reality is, is a newer fandom. I mean, people are into that, you know, people that really like computer games or graphics or that kind of thing. So it kind of fits in and, and we have that over overhanging arch of everybody's welcome and everybody can do, you know, whatever they're passionate about. And that was just a piece of that. Graphic novel and comic strip fans enjoy the chance to meet and learn from three local professionals during an author-illustrator panel discussion featuring comics creators Ivan Brunetti, Michael Morisi, and Katie Schenkel. The panel is really about the process of creating comics. There's a lot of interesting opinions about how to make comics and there's not enough focus on that relationship between writers and artists and editors. And I think that's very special and it's something that, that we really got to talk about at the panel. I just try to share my experience in such a way that it hopefully inspires other people to just pick up a pencil or a pen and uh, whatever notebook they have and they just get started because that's really what I do and I just try to demystify it a little bit. When you're writing and creating is to do it for yourself. It's easy for writers, especially young writers, to get uh, distracted with a lot of different concerns and I think it's better to remember that like the point you want to be at is the point that you're most comfortable at doing the things that you want to do and the things that make you the most happy and if rewards come from that that's great I like the immediacy of it and the humble nature of it that you're just working with you know pen and paper uh, right now I mean popular culture is very much based on graphic novels there's so many movies and television shows that started as graphic novels so they really kind of uh, found their way into all aspects of uh, popular culture. 
Even as these notable author illustrators inspire their audience, they become inspired by FanFest and the ideals behind this energetic community event. I am so excited that Mount Prospect is doing this. I, I love libraries and I think they're a really amazing way for kids to find out about books and about stories. And any way that, that libraries can do events like this and really pull kids into reading is really special. It brings people out, it gives them an opportunity to, you know, wear cool costumes and do these things that they, you know, normally don't have maybe an outlet to do and, and be surrounded with cool books and get an opportunity to be exposed to new things and just be part of a community. I mean, it, along with literacy, one of the most important things for any, for all of us is community. And, and this is what this is, is building a community. Everyone is welcome. We have something for you no matter who you are. We want the community to feel like they can always come here, you know, and they can come here not just for books and not just for movies, but they can come here for meeting other community members. They can come here for family activities, things that they can do together that, you know, they, they, they can have an experience. Um, so I think it's just the immersiveness and the passion that we offer and the help that we offer and that we are here for the community and we welcome them with open arms. Developing one's core strength and balance can reduce the risk of falling and perhaps help to prevent one of the main causes of debilitating injury. Joining me today on Library Life to discuss her library program, Don't Fall, Test Your Strength and Balance, is physical therapist Diana Sahaki, and welcome. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. Diana, let's start out by talking a little bit about your background in the field of physical therapy. Yeah, so this year marks my 20th year as a physical therapist, which is hard for me to believe. <laughs> I graduated in 1999 from Northwestern Physical Therapy, a master's degree from downtown Chicago. Mm -hmm. And I um, started working right after in a corporate clinic setting. Uh -huh. And I learned a lot from a great mentor about how to grow a clinic and run a clinic and became a director shortly after finishing school. And I come from a family of a lot of physicians and doctors doing their own clinics. And so there was a bug in me to always open my own practice. And so a few years after being in corporate health and really kind of learning a lot, but seeing the trends towards greater um, limitations to being able to do your own ideas and things. Mm -hmm. I wanted to open my own practice and so in 2006 uh, we had moved to Mount Prospect the year before my family um, and so I decided to open my own clinic in downtown Mount Prospect wow. and I've been doing that for 13 years now. Well that is very entrepreneurial of you yeah. isn't it? <laughs> so let's get right to the business at hand and that of course is fall prevention. Mm -hmm. um, why is this an area of concern regardless of age? Uh, falls are very costly to the healthcare system and fall prevention is proven to help people reduce their fall risk. And so in the last um, several years there's been much more um, initiative put into fall prevention. Mm -hmm. We, 75% um, of people ages 70 and above have abnormal balance. About $754 million were spent in 2015 um, in caring for fatal falls that lead to, you know, very serious falls. And so it's an astronomical burden on the healthcare systems. And what's, from a physical therapist perspective, falls are preventable. Mm -hmm. And you can improve your balance, you can prepare to reduce your fall risk. And so this subject is so important. And you don't have to be. Um, as I said, the earlier statistics, 70 and above, and your balance can be uh, begin to decline pretty early on. So let's talk a little bit about core wellness, because mm -hmm. I understand the core is mm -hmm. really the center of your balance. Tell us what area of the body is the core and why it is so related to balance. Yeah, so the core is a four-sided container. The top of it is your diaphragm, which is your breathing muscle. Mm -hmm. Your bottom is your pelvic floor, which is a very dynamic area of muscles. And the front of this container is the abdominal muscles going all the way deep to one called the transversus abdominis. Mm -hmm. Not to be technical, but very important to understand that core goes all the way in and then out, and then the back muscles. So it's the top, the bottom, and front and back is what makes the core. So really all your trunk. 
And the reason this is important, one of the number one things you see happening as people age, and even in the young age now because of the sitting we do and gravity, is we start to fall forward. Right. And especially in the elderly. And that is largely due to core weakness. And the muscles, some muscles are getting shortened, some muscles are getting weaker. And when you are losing good posture and collapsing and your center of mass is moving forward, you're much likely to fall because you're not in the best alignment, which is one of the key pieces to maintaining good balance. And so core strength is very critical and it's not easy to learn how to strengthen your core, especially not when you get older because, mm -hmm. you know, you, most often clients will say to me, well, I've never had a strong core. Right. But the good news is it's never too late. Core consists of muscles. And just like I can take a five pound weight and strengthen my bicep muscle, I can learn from a physical therapist the right exercises to do to strengthen my core, to help me stay more upright, to help me resist better the challenges that come from losing my balance right. that begin at that most important and dynamic part of our body. Additionally, the glutes are not technically part of the core. The glutes are the muscles of the butt, mm -hmm. and they're very important in balance control, and they're really the stabilizers to the core. So we cannot neglect discussing core and glutes and that whole system of muscles to help us move better, stay stronger, more stable, and resist falls, and that is a huge part of where it all begins. Now, those statistics that you said earlier were quite alarming, mm -hmm. especially when you think of the human factor, you know, the, the families that are losing their loved ones, et cetera. Absolutely. How can you tell uh, whether or not you are, or you or a loved one might be at risk of falls? Yeah, so when somebody comes into physical therapy, we um, ask a lot of questions. Um, it can be a little bit overwhelming, but that's part of our job. We're investigators. And so, of course, <clears throat> when we, so one is asking questions, second is observation. The minute a client walks into our clinic, we can see if they're stable or not, right? If they're looking to grab onto something, if they go to get up from the chair and they've got to really use their arms, immediately we know that they're starting to lose some of their stability. Right. But then their history is huge. Have they had, are they tripping? Are they reducing their activity level because they're less uh, confident of their ability to do better, especially when it gets darker earlier and it gets icy or they are not gardening as much. They give you these uh, cues that because they have to walk on the grass and the grass is more difficult. So through right. observation and through questions and through medical history, because oftentimes the medications you're on might have side effects of loss of balance mm -hmm. and certain diagnoses. If you have high blood pressure, low blood pressure, if you're diabetic, you might have um, neuropathies, so you have numbness in your legs. So right. these are, there's a lot of things that create balance problems. So we're trying to find out through all these uh, pieces of the puzzle what is at the root of it. So what are some of the therapeutic interventions that can, you can do in order to help, uh, I guess, strengthen mm -hmm. this situation. Yeah, absolutely. So there are some things you can do alone at home, and part of physical therapy is you get a homework program that you need to do. But of course, when it comes to balance, it's a little tricky because we don't want you to do unsafe things on your own. Of course. And so we're going to give you things that might not be the most challenging, but they're still effective. Mm -hmm. For example, um, four or five exercises everybody should do. You always should do them where you have some arm support to be safe. And so marching in place, you know, being comfortable marching. When we walk, we stand on one leg with each step. And yet, if you ask older folks to stand on one leg, they get very nervous. Of well, course. what do you do when you're marching? Mm -hmm. You're standing on one leg each time. So marching is one. Um, another exercise we have people do is just a, so a kicking like a clock. You know, 9 o'clock, 12 o'clock, uh, et cetera, you know, with the legs. So again, you're practicing one-legged standing, both legs, front okay. kick side kick, back kick, front, mm -hmm. side, back. Um, one-legged standing. Everybody should be able to stand on one leg 10 seconds, mm -hmm. yet so many people of various age groups cannot. So that's another one. Um, standing with your feet all the way together, that narrows your base of support, and furthermore, standing with one leg in front of the other. Mm -hmm. That's a balanced thing that we work on, so that's something you can practice at home. Um, two more that I'll throw in, always practicing sit to stand without using your arms. So finding a good chair and trying to come out of it and then mm -hmm. coming back down is really a good exercise to keep you strong. 
and then sidestepping down your hallway to keep some of the glute muscles nice and strong and to work on upright. So these kinds of things you can do at home. Now some of these things might be a little bit overwhelming mm -hmm. for an older person. So what would you suggest as far yeah. as that's concerned? So the cool thing in therapy is we can, that's our biggest job is we adapt. So same thing, you march in a chair, okay? You maybe don't go all the way up, but you just kind of lean into a standing position. Okay. Um, we do some leg kicks, okay? Mm -hmm. um, you always can hold and do just a side kick. Instead of sidestepping, you do a side kick. Go up on your tippy toes. So again, that's where seeing a therapist, we can customize a program for the client. But you're absolutely right. When you're nervous about losing your balance, it's very hard to know where to start and again why Medicare is covering this part of treatment mm -hmm. for the seniors because getting guided home exercise program guided treatments while you're in PT is important to set the right program for you so that's a great question generic exercises are not suitable for everybody and of course it's important to think about this when you're a little younger so mm -hmm. you can you know develop that core absolutely so and that's the thing that's the key of prevention and so at our clinic we have um, balance type work through all our classes that we do for all our students and part of our education to them is you should never lose the ability to do this and so keep building on it and so but the good news always we want to encourage clients is it's never too late i know that you're going to be coming to the library to do some individual screenings mm -hmm in April. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about what patrons can expect to experience when they come for a screening. Yeah, so we uh, do these screenings and they're really good because we use two uh, standardized tests to um, perform on each participant and the data is nationally uh, collected and reliable. Mm -hmm. And so these are used across the board. We use a, t a test called the timed up and go and we use a Berg balance test that we do on cl with clients. And they, the timed up and go is a one task test and it just looks at your ability to walk a certain distance and get up and back into a chair in certain time zones. So based on how long it takes you to complete it, it gives us an idea of your fall risk. The Berg test is a multiple question test and it looks at um, things like standing on one leg, like stepping up, like reaching out of your base of comfort, right. like closing your eyes and so again, uh, basic things that relate to balance that are research uh, investigated that give you values and based on your scores we can identify if you're at a low medium or high fall risk okay. so the data gives us a certain number and again this is not our own data this is national accepted data used universally so it's robust it's good and really everybody every person who's at a risk for fall which really I would say age 60 and above, I would begin getting a balance screen. Mm -hmm. Any therapy clinic you go to should be able to offer you some form of, that, of a balance screen. That is just so much embedded in our training. Mm -hmm. And you should get it checked every month, every year. Now before people come to your clinic, should they um, get a script from their doctor? Yeah, so with Medicare it's always helpful to have a script, but for a balance screening you don't need a script. Mm -hmm. So just to be clear, what I would recommend, a screening is a service that can be done in a short amount of time, and for that you, you don't need a doctor's order. With Medicare though, although with many other payers you no longer need a doctor's order, but we still do for Medicare in order to treat. Mm -hmm. So if somebody wanted to come in and get treatment for their balance, then we would need the doctor's order. And doctors are very um, in favor of all this. So you mm -hmm. shouldn't have any trouble getting your doctor, especially if they know you've had tripping or close to falls, not even an actual fall, but signs of potential fall because prevention universally is known to be very important. Well, this has been so informative. Thank you so much for being with me today. Thank you so much for having me and I look forward to being at the library. For more information regarding Diana's program, Don't Fall, Test Your Strength and Balance, or any upcoming Mount Prospect Public Library event, contact the library at area code 847-253-5675 or visit our website at www.mppl.org. Every month, young adults gather here in the teen space to enjoy a Friday fun day. Let's begin on an event in the series teaching patrons how to produce decorative magnets and pins. 
Mount Prospect Public Library's Teen Space is a homey place where young adults in grades 6 through 12 can gather to study, socialize, and enjoy stress-free events like Friday Fun Days. The Friday Fun Days were started last summer with the intention of offering more drop-in programming, so programming for the teens where they don't have to plan ahead and register in advance. And so the idea was just to give them a little more freedom and then have the programs be more sandbox-like where they can get creative and make something and just enjoy themselves. The laid-back drop-in aspect of this series invites teens to come and go as they please, participating as much or as little as they like in the activity of the month. And it changes. Sometimes it's a craft, sometimes it's, you know, open gaming, something different. On this particular Friday Fun Day, teens are trying their hand at creating decorative magnets and pins. We have a whole bunch of different supplies that they can use. There's beads, there's bottle caps. We have the button maker out, which is always a favorite, where they can decorate a picture and then press it into a button and attach the magnet to the back. You're using skills in order to create something and you have that sense of accomplishment at the end. And I think that's great for teens. There's a lot of stress with school and work and everything else going on. It's nice to just sit down, do something, and then have this concrete example of you did that at the end. The goals for the program to get teens involved in the library, show them that they can show up and we have things for them to do, and then you know encourage a sense of community amongst the teens. They're all here and they all get involved in this. They start talking to each other, you know, start building more of a community feeling between not just me and the teens or the library and the teens, but all of the teens together in the teen space. Earlier in this program, we absorbed the energy and enthusiasm of MPPL FanFest 2019, a fun-filled event where library staff members joined patrons of all ages in displaying their love of literature and pop culture. Let's once again check in with Head of Community Services Jennifer Amling to find out what she recommends as her best book pick from the Adult Services Department. Meddling Kids by Edgar Cantero. In 1977, in the small mining town of Blyton Hills, Oregon, four teens form the Blyton Summer Detective Club and become famous for unmasking the Sleepy Lake monster who has been terrorizing the area, one Thomas X. Wickley, a would-be thief in costume. Sound familiar? If you watch Scooby-Doo at all, it should. However, the teens, Peter, Carrie, Andrea, Andy, and Nate all go their separate ways, but are haunted by nightmares from their experiences that night. Several years later, the teens return to Blyton Hills. The old mining town where they grew up has gone downhill in the years they've been gone. They reconnect with an Air Force captain who had helped them in the past and now runs the local junkyard. He supplies them with the tools and weapons they may need and off they go to face the monsters of their nightmares. Think of a grown-up Nancy Drew Hardy Boys adventure that has channeled some of Lovecraft's Cthulhu monster madness and added a dash of witchcraft, humor, and romance. <laughs> Recommended for those who don't mind a little horror and gore with their mystery reading. Recommendations from the Adult Services Department this month feature tales of satirical horror. John Dies at the End by David Wong is the story of two beer-drinking friends who think something horrific is going on in their Midwestern town. In a Dirty Job by Christopher Moore, a neurotic and anxious hypochondriac confronts the challenges of being a widower and a single parent when his wife dies of a freak medical condition on the day their daughter is born. Pride and Prejudice and Zombies by Seth Graham Smith is set in a quiet English village where a mysterious plague has fallen and the dead are returning to life. In Gill's All Fright Diner by A. Lee Martinez, a werewolf and a vampire hired to eliminate a restaurant's zombie problem find themselves tackling a much stickier adversary. And in Good Omens, the nice and accurate prophecies of Agnes Nutter Witch, 
by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett, an end-of-the-world prediction is met with a few problems that arise to complicate matters. Recommendations from the Youth Services Department this month highlight mythological fiction. In Loki's Wolves by K.L. Armstrong, the descendants of two very different gods must combine forces to fight monsters who threaten an apocalypse. Charlie Hernandez and the League of Shadows by Ryan Calejo tells the tale of a middle schooler who realizes the Hispanic folklore he heard as a child is true when he grows horns and feathers while at the heart of a battle to save the world. In Aru Shah and the End of Time by Roshani Choksi, a 12-year-old dares to prove an ancient lamp is cursed and inadvertently frees a demon. Xander and the Lost Island of Monsters by Margaret Dillaway centers on two best friends who read a comic book and are thrust into a samurai warrior adventure in which one must use inherited powers to save his father. And in The Colossus Rises by Peter Larangis, four teens begin a quest to find seven pieces of Atlantis's power hidden long ago each having the ability to save them from certain death. Finally, here's Youth Programming Coordinator Erin Emmerich with her best book pick from this department. In The Serpent's Secret by Sayantani Dasgupta, Kiran Mala comes home from school on her 12th birthday to discover that her world has been turned upside down. Her parents have disappeared from their New Jersey home, there are two princes on flying horses battling a demon on her front lawn, and all those stories her parents have always told her about being an Indian princess from another dimension, turns out they were all true. In order to bring her parents back, Kiran Mala and the two princes must travel to the kingdom beyond. There, Kiran Mala uncovers surprising facts in her family tree and comes into her own as a strong young woman. What sets this novel apart from the rest is the author's playful tone. I mean, how would you react if you're living a normal, boring life and then all of a sudden you're meeting talking birds and half demons? Fans of Rick Riordan will love this action-packed new series full of Indian mythology. Taking in the enormous selection of books here in the Youth Services Department, it might be difficult to choose a favorite. This is, however, the task we gave local school principals. The result, a two-evening event highlighting an assortment of authors and themes. Let's find out what happens when principals read at MPPL. A recurring event so popular it encompasses two separate evenings, Principals Read at MPPL gives local elementary school students a chance to experience educational leaders outside the academic norm. We're very excited to be featuring principals from across Mount Prospect. They will be coming to the library to read one of their favorite books, which they've chosen, and they'll be reading it to a lot of their students and students from across the town. Elementary school liaison Carol Capra helps to facilitate this, the first session of the 2019 Principals Read at MPPL event. Tonight we have two District 26 schools, Indian Grove and Euclid. Then we have two District 59 schools, Robert Frost and Forest View. And then we have a District 21 school, Robert Frost. More than 100 patrons, including students in preschool through fifth grade and their parents, listen to the animated versions of five carefully chosen picture books. I chose the book The Three Questions, and um, this book talks about the three most important questions we can ask in our lives. And nowadays I feel like we need to be a little bit more conscious about not so much the answers that we seek, but the questions that we ask, and feel more comfortable about asking questions and also being the recipient of questions. These three questions really make us think more critically and help our students to really understand what their purpose is and where they're headed in their future. The book that I brought is called Big Bear Hug and it is by Nicholas Oldlin, who is a Canadian author, and the reason why I picked it is because I'm from Canada, and so it's near and dear to my heart, and he's actually from my hometown. And it's about kindness, and it's about nature, 
things that I care very much about. It's a very simple book, but it's got a great message. So I picked the book, uh, I Want to Go Home, and I chose it because it had a fun flair to it with, this, with the child writing letters to his parents who are out of town about why he doesn't want to be at Grandma and Grandpa's and how he shifts his thinking the more he has time to enjoy with his grandparents. And it's fun to see the back and forth letter writing between the parents and the child. I thought that was a fun way to show other kids. I brought one of my favorites. It's called The True Story of the Three Little Pigs, and I love it for a lot of reasons. I mean, it's a great teaching tool to teach point of view to kids, but the main reason is because it's just hilarious. It's so funny and it makes me laugh and I know it makes the kids laugh as well. David Brzezinski visited our school this year as an author, so we've been trying to push authors to come visit our school as much as we can. The kids love hearing about it and he also illustrates a lot of his own books, so I thought it was a timely book just because of the season, but also really because this author was phenomenal. It's so exciting to see the kids and their expressions when they see their principal. Wait, they're not at school, they're at the library. And it's just wonderful to see that connection. It gets them with their families to the library and to enjoy all the wonderful things we have here at the library. It is one of my most favorite events. I really enjoy coming out here into the community and then sharing some of my favorite books. And I really appreciate what the library does by providing the book to our library so that we can enjoy it as well. I think it's so fun for the kids to come out and see their principals reading a book, promoting literacy, having fun, and environment that's low-key. It's also fun to get to see the other principals. Sometimes we get locked up and we don't get to get out and see each other, so it's kind of fun as well. I've done it every year they've offered it since I've been in the area, and I think it's fantastic. It brings families together, brings the love of reading to everyone, um, and it's just a fun way for kids to see their principals in a different way. I love it. I'm a huge library fan myself, and it just makes me really happy to be here and be able to support the library, And because I know the library supports our kids. It's a great Great partnership. I grew up in Mount Prospect so I remember this library when it wasn't here, the original library and it was so small and just to see what it's grown into in terms of how the kids love coming here. It's a real integral part of Mount Prospect because we have so many different school districts in the village. It's nice that even though we're at the north end of the village a lot of our students love coming down here and participating in the programs. Our goals are to reach our community, um, all, all parts of our community. These schools are representative of all parts of town. We hope all families from across the whole town come and enjoy the fun. Principals Read at MPPL is just one example of the many entertaining, informational, and educational events featured here at the Mount Prospect Public Library every month. Don't miss any library programs you'd like to experience. Here's a list of events scheduled in March and April. Reservations are strongly recommended. For more information regarding these events, call area code 847-253-5675 or visit our website at www.mppl.org. You'll also find a listing and description of all upcoming Mount Prospect Public Library events in your library newsletter preview. The costumes on display here at Mount Prospect Public Library's FanFest 2019 represent the diverse palettes of those who savor the many aspects of popular culture. With this in mind, our Library Life camera today asks the question, who is your favorite book, movie, or comic strip character and why? Here are some responses. Uh, Doctor Strange, he seemed to have uh, abilities that no one else had. Kind of a unique character in the Marvel Universe. I'd say Wolverine because he's immortal and he's, a, he's overall a cool character. That would be Elsa. She is a character in the Disney movie Frozen. I have four little granddaughters and so everything in our house is pink and frozen at the moment. That wraps up this edition of Library Life. For more information on any of the Mount Prospect Public Library services and events highlighted here, call area code 847-253-5675 or visit our website 
at www.mppl.org.